<clears throat> okay, let's get started. So, we were talking about uh, circular motion and this circular motion that we are talking is uh, uniform motion. Okay, Uniform motion means when the object is moving in a circle, it maintains constant velocity. So, the velocity is not changing. However, when an object moves in a circular track or circular path, what changes is the direction of the motion. So, in this picture, you see this object, this black dot, it's moving in this counterclockwise direction. And while it's moving in this counterclockwise direction, the velocity or the magnitude of the velocity at each and every point on this path remains constant. Okay, you see the length of this green arrow, it's same everywhere. But the direction is changing all the time. At this point, its direction is this way, meaning it tends to go this way. Here, its direction is this way, tends to go that way. Here, its direction is this way, so it tends to go this way. So, velocity has two things. Oops. It has, no, no, it's not showing the pin. So, velocity has magnitude and direction. Okay, so you can say velocity is changing when either its magnitude or direction is changing, or sometimes it could be both. Okay, so in this case, velocity is. We can say that the velocity of this object is changing because its direction is changing, although the magnitude of the speed or magnitude of the velocity is same throughout the motion, but since the duration is changing all the time, so we can say the velocity is changing. Okay? So, let me write down on this one. So, velocity has two components. One is magnitude because it is a vector quantity. So, it has magnitude and duration. Okay. If either one changes, the velocity also changes. So, here we are talking about or we are dealing with a uniform circular motion. So, that means there is no change in the magnitude of the velocity. Okay, so, velocity or uh, magnitude of velocity. is constant, but for a circular motion, the direction of the velocity changes all the time. So, that means we can say that in a circular motion, velocity changes all the time. <coughs> okay. Again, this is very important. Okay. So, the change in velocity comes not from the change in its value, meaning if you have a velocity of 2 meters per second here, it would be 2 meters per second here as well, 2 meters per second here as well. 2 meters per second everywhere. Okay? But, 
see the duration is changing all the time. And that causes the change in the velocity. And we know that if there is change in velocity, then there is change in, uh, then there is acceleration from the definition of acceleration. Okay? We know acceleration is defined as change in velocity over time. So if there is change in velocity, then there is acceleration. Okay. And what causes the acceleration? From Newton's second law, we have Newton's second law is force is equal to mass times acceleration. Acceleration is caused by force. Yeah. So this is Newton's second law. So acceleration is caused by force. That means there must be some kind of force that is acting on this object that keeps the object in circular track. Okay? And that force is called so, uh, centripetal force. Okay? So centripetal force keeps the object or let's write one more sentence here. So centripetal force provides this acceleration. And this acceleration is also called centripetal acceleration. Okay? You can say that this is also called centripetal because it's provided by centripetal force, so the acceleration is called centripetal acceleration. And this centripetal force is always directed towards the center. Okay, and this is the force that keeps the object in circular motion. In a circular track or circular path, or you can just say circular motion. Okay? So that means in order to keep an object in a circular track, you need some kind of force. Okay? So, let's say you have an object, it's moving in a straight path. So, let's say you want to keep this in a circular track. So, what you need to do is you need to either push or pull this object such that the force you apply is perpendicular to the, this velocity. So, you push this object this way, so it will change its path. Okay? And if you remove that force, it will tend to go this way, tangent to the, its path. And in order to keep this in a circular track, you again need to, you again need to push this inward. Okay? And then it will change the path. You push it. You, okay? you push it all the time. So when you do that, you are putting the object in a circular track. So this object will be now in a circular track. So in order to keep this object in this circular track, you are pushing this object inward okay, all the time. So the duration of force that you're applying is towards the center of the circular track. Okay, that's what this last sentence is. Oops, I don't want to. So the force that keeps the object in a circular motion is this force. Okay, that's the centripetal force. So the main aim here is to figure out different kinds of centripetal forces. Okay? So centripetal force is not a separate kind of force. It's, it could be either a tension force, it could be a friction force, it could be gravitational attraction, 
It could be some kind of normal force. Okay, we just need to figure out which force is acting as a centripetal force. Okay, that's the main idea here. And I have summarized this in a summary, this summary sheet. So uh, if you go to Blackboard, you can find that summary sheet. see how to magnify this. So when you are rotating an object tied to a string, the force that keeps the object in a circular motion is the tension of the string. Okay? If you cut the string, then you remove the string, uh, you remove the tension. And when you remove the tension, then the object won't be in the circular motion anymore. It will just go in a straight path. Okay? So the tension force is the force that keeps the object in circular motion in case of the object rotating with a string. Uh, likewise, when a car is moving in a circular track, what keeps the car in a circular track is this friction force. Okay? Friction force of the, the tires and the road. If you remove the friction force, then the, the car would not be in a circular track. It will tend to move in a straight path. Okay? For example, in case of icy road or uh, muddy road, where there is very little friction, it's very hard to keep the car in circular track because of lack of friction. Okay? So this friction force, which is pointing to the this center, so this is a circular track, and center is somewhere here. So this friction force is pointing to the center, and that is the centripetal force. Okay. So here you see this picture. The static friction is pushing the car inward. That keeps this car in the circular track. Okay. <clears throat> Likewise, in this banked track, okay, this something like a racing track, it's a little bit tilted. And in this case, this part of this normal force provides the centripetal force. So how do you recognize what force provides the centripetal force? It's pretty straightforward. So what you do is you draw the free body diagram. Okay, you Just draw the free body diagram and see which force is pointing to the center of the track. And that's the centripetal force. Okay? For example, draw the free body diagram here. What forces you have? You have this normal force. Okay? And you have this weight. Okay? And we are, we are neglecting the friction of the tire here. Okay? You can use the friction of tire also, but that would complicate the scenario here. So we don't need to worry about that. So this normal force has two components. One is this way, and the other one is this up. Okay? And see, this force is directed to the center. And that's the force that provides the centripetal force. Okay? So in this case, the normal force is centripetal force. Likewise, here you see in the free body diagram of this car, see which force is pointed to the center. The center is somewhere here. The car is, the car is driving along this curve path like this. So this is the force that is pointing to the center. So that means this is the centripetal force. Okay? Likewise, when you are rotating uh, this object with a, a string attached to it, something like um, that. So you have an object. You rotate this object in a circular, circular path. That's not quite circular, but assume that that's the circular path. So what force is there? So there is this tension force. Tension force is always pointing away from the object. So this is object. So there is this tension force. And this, you see this tension force is pointing to the center. That means this is the centripetal force. Okay? Tension is the centripetal force. So to recognize the centripetal force, all you need to do is draw a free body diagram. Okay?
So again, in this case, we have normal force, which is, perp uh, which is perpendicular to the surface. And this normal force has two components, one along this direction and the other one along this direction. And since this component points to the center, so that's the centripetal force. And that keeps the object in circular motion. Likewise, uh, another example here. So you have a pendulum. This pendulum is called a conical pendulum. So you, uh, let's see if I can find something to show you how you rotate this. I don't have. Unfortunately, people on Zoom cannot see this, but. So conical, conical pendulum is something like this. Okay? You're rotating the pendulum like this. So in this one, what, which force is the centripetal force? So again, draw free body diagram. So in this case, we have tension, okay, this tension, and we have this mg. Those are the two forces acting on this object. And then think about which force is directed along the center. So our circle is this one. So this tension has two components. One is this component, other one is this component. Okay, so this tension is a vector. Resolve tension into y component and x component. And then see which one is pointing along the radius or circle which is this one, right? So that's the centripetal force. So that's how you figure out the centripetal force. Okay. Um, like in this case, this Ferris wheel, what's the centripetal force? The centripetal force is provided by this mg, okay, weight of the object because it's pulled down. So that's the weight. And at this point, now this normal would provide the centripetal force, okay. So it's a little bit different scenario here. We'll talk about this in a second. But let's look at uh, problem number. Did we, did we do number three last time? Let's look at number three. I don't know if we finished this or not last time. So let's, let's look at this one again and see how to deal with this. So we have this kind of inclined road. It is inclined at uh, 31 degrees, okay, so this is not given in the question, but if you Google that, okay, so Daytona International Speedway has the inclination of about 31 degrees, okay, you can just write that in the question. So there's this track, okay, circular track, and the center is somewhere here, okay. So the car is on this track. So the first thing we need to do is draw free body diagram and determine which force provides the centripetal force. Okay, so draw free body diagram. We have this normal force. Okay, that's the normal force. And then we have weight, gravity force vertically down, okay. So in previous chapters, I told you that you can define the coordinate system along the surface of the inclined plane. But in this case, we won't do that because we, the reason is because we want to know 
which force is directed along this line. Okay. So we want to find the forces that is pointing to the center. So that's the center of the track. So we want to find the force. That's why we'll be choosing this as our x-axis. Because if I choose this surface as x-axis, then that won't serve us. That won't help us to figure out this force. Okay, so again, to find the force pointing along this direction, I want to use this as my x-axis. Okay, if I use this as x-axis, then my y-axis would be just perpendicular to that. So my y-axis would be this one. Okay, that's my y-axis. So that's the free body diagram. And now we need to see all x and y forces. Okay. So last time we showed that if this is 31 degrees, then this would also be 31 degrees. Okay, so that's 31 degrees. In the lab, we showed that last time. Now, if that's 31 degrees, then this angle is vertically opposite angle to that angle. Okay, so this angle and this angle are vertically opposite angles. So this would also be 31 degrees. Okay. So now, let's find the x component of this normal force. X component of the normal force which is this one, what should that be? Should that be n cosine theta or n sine theta? Hmm? Yeah, exactly. So you have this vector. If you have angle here, then this part would be n, if this is n cosine theta, the side that is away from the angle, this would be n sine theta. Okay. So this is n sine theta, and this part is n cosine theta. So which force is pointing along the center? That's the force, okay? and that's the centripetal force. So here, the centripetal force is in sine theta. Okay. And the formula for centripetal force is mv squared over r. Okay. We'll use this in lab also, in today's lab or tomorrow's lab. So this is the formula for centripetal force. Okay. And our centripetal force is that, so you replace this fc by n sine theta. Let's see, I have a question here. Would it be negative? Uh, yes, you can write that as a negative. That's a good point. Yeah. Mm. Uh, that would be negative. Uh, but here, this acceleration would also be negative in this case. Okay. So, uh, this force would be negative, right? That's right, in sine theta. Okay. Let me one, write one more step, okay? Just to make the things a little bit easier. So, Fc is mass times acceleration, okay? centripetal acceleration. So, force is mass times centripetal acceleration. So, here force is in sine theta. And here, m, and here you see this acceleration is also pointing in this negative direction. Okay, the force and acceleration would point in the same direction. So we have not just the force, but acceleration also in negative direction. So you can write this as minus v square over r. Okay, so the centripetal acceleration has the formula of v square over r. In this case, we are putting negative sign because it's pointing to the left. Yeah. So, you can cancel negative and negative signs. So, we have n 
sine theta is equal to mv squared over r. So the question, let's see what the question is asking. We want to find the maximum speed, okay? So this v would be v max, okay, maximum speed. So to find v max, we need mass of the car, r, radius of the track, radius of the track is given. We need angle, angle is also given, but we don't have this and mass. So that means this alone cannot give us what we need. So we need to look for something else. So then, you can look for the Newton's second law along the y direction, okay? Because this is incomplete, so we cannot get the required thing here. So use this, okay? Newton's second law along y direction. So what are the forces we have along y direction? We have n cosine theta, okay, that's along positive y direction. And then we have w, which is along down, so y direction, negative direction, is equal to m. What is the acceleration in the vertical axis? Is there acceleration in the vertical direction? No, because the car is not accelerating up or down. It's fixed along the vertical axis. It's only accelerating inward, okay? So that's zero. So that means n cosine theta is equal to, you can take it to the right side, or in other words, you can add w and w on both sides, okay? So you get n cosine theta is equal to w, and w is, we know, m times g, so mg, so we want to get rid of this n because we don't have n. So write this in terms of n and then replace this n by this mg over cosine theta, okay? So let's call this equation two. So replace n in one by two. And again, the reason we are doing this is because we want to eliminate e, uh, eliminate n from one. So n is mg cosine theta, okay, that's n here. And then we have sine theta, that is equal to mv squared over r. So we can cancel m and m, that makes our job a lot easier because then we don't have to worry about mass. And then sine theta over cosine theta is tan theta. Now here in this equation, everything is known except V, and that's what we want, okay? And <clears throat> if we want to find V max, then we need to get theta max, okay? So to get V max, this theta should be max also. So let's write this equation in terms of V. So rearrange the terms and then write in terms of V. So how do you do that? So multiply both sides by R. Okay, and then take square root on both sides. So R, G, 10, theta max. And theta max of the track is 31 degrees. So the radius of the track is 240 meters. G is 9.8 meters per second squared, 10, 31 degrees, okay? Oh, 320, sorry. I was looking at uh, problem number two, sorry. 
Uh, that, that, that's from the previous problem, sorry. It's 320, that's right. I was looking at problem two. 320, yeah. So do the calculation. That should give you 43.4 meters per second, okay? And in, if you convert that into miles per hour, that would be equivalent of 96 miles per hour. So, you, they, so the racers can drive the car pretty much safely up to 96 miles per hour. But if you include friction of the tires also in this, they can go even higher than that. Okay? This is without considering the friction of the tires. So the friction of tires also provide uh, some centripetal force. With that, they can even go as high as like 100 20 miles per hour. Yeah, that's a good question. It depends on the angle, yes. So we can find that also through the angle. So um, it depends on the angle. So there may be a numerical problem. We'll see if there is any numerical problem that asks for that. Okay, so let's look at number four. So, let, let me ask you guys, what force in this case, on, on number four, provides the centripetal force required to keep that flat puck on the table? in circular track. So what's the centripetal force in this case? Mm -hmm. That's right. So this tension is holding this object in circular track. If you cut the string, then it won't be in circular track anymore. It will just go in straight path. So this tension is keeping this in circular track. Okay? And you have this string as well as you have a hanging object. So this hanging object is held by the tension of this string. So you have two objects of interest here. One is this object that is in circular motion, and you have also this hanging object, okay? And these strings are continuous strings, so they have the same, same tension. This tension is providing the centripetal force, and this tension is providing or holding this hanging, ma hanging mass or object, okay? So, Centripetal force is provided by, centripetal force is given by that, and this centripetal force is provided by tension, okay? So that's the condition. Now let's look at the question, what the question is asking. So the question is asking, what is the speed of the puck? So we want to find V. So to find V in this formula or in this equation, we need mass, which is given. We need a radius of the circle, which is also given, but we don't have tension. So how to find tension? And by the way, because we are dealing with two masses here, so it's very important to differentiate the two masses, okay? So here, this is denoted by capital M, and this one is denoted by small m. Okay, you see the picture. That's small m, that's capital M. So here, we don't have tension. So think about how to find tension. Look at this object and draw the free body diagram. I mean, I already drew free body diagram here. 
So what can you do here? You can write Newton's law for this object, okay? So for this object, I can write sum of forces along y direction is, okay, let's consider that's positive y and that's negative y, okay? Sum of all forces along y direction is mass times acceleration. So what forces we have here? We have T, we have mg, okay, weight is equal to, do we have acceleration? Is the object accelerating up and down? No, it's just staying at rest, so that's zero. So that means tension is mg, right? So in this case, this m is small case m. Here in this case, this m is capital M because we are talking about this mass here. Okay, so we need to write here capital M. So that's very important. Don't mi don't mix the mix up the two masses. So tension. Now you can replace tension by this small m g. Here we have capital M v square over r. Now write this formula or this equation in terms of v. So multiply both sides by r and divide both sides by m, capital M. So then you get r m g over capital M is equal to v squared. So v is equal to square root of r m g over m. Okay. So replace the numbers, r is 0 0.75, mass, small mass, uh, the mass, hanging mass is 0 0.2 kilogram, g is 9.8 meters per second squared, and capital M is 0 0.06 kilogram, okay? And if you do the calculation, I'm not very sure if my answer is correct or not. You, can, you guys can double check, okay? So I, I got 4.95 meters per second. So please double check that, okay? I may be wrong. So that's the velocity of the object rotating on the table. Let's see, I have a comment here. 4.95, yeah, that's the answer, okay? So it seems like that's the right answer. Okay, so let's look at number five. So we have this object and it's rotating in this circular path. Okay, the center is somewhere here. So here, again, we want to figure out which force is pointing along this direction, along the radius or towards the center. Okay, so we want to figure out the force pointing in this direction, which is the centripetal force. Okay. So centripetal force is what we want to figure out. And let's draw the free body diagram for this object. So this is the object. So there is tension because there is a string. Whenever there is a string, there is tension. And tension is always pointing away from the object. Okay, So that's the tension. And this object also has the gravity force or weight pointing down. 
you can write W or we can just write MG and those are the only forces we have and then you define the coordinates. So, let us define this as our x axis and this one has this one has y axis. Okay. So, this angle is 5 degrees. If this is 5 degrees, then this will also be 5 degrees because these two lines, these dashed lines are parallel to each other. So that means, this angle would be alternate to this angle. So, they are alternate angles. So, 5 degrees <laughs> and then look at all the forces along x and y direction. So, we have w, w along y direction, but T is, tension is between y and x. So, we can resolve tension into x component and y component. So, the x component of tension would be T, would, be, would it be sine or cosine? This is our angle. It is x direction, right? X component. Sine, yeah. So, that is sine theta because again this side is away from the angle and this side that is touching the angle would be cosine. Okay. Now, you see that this is the force that is pointing along this line. That means, this is the centripetal force. Okay. So, our centripetal force in this case is this is T sin theta. Okay. And then, you can see what the question is asking. So, the question is asking what is the tension in the string. So, we want to find the tension. Uh, can we find tension? So, we have theta given, m is given, r is given, but we do not have v. Okay. Without v, we cannot find tension. So that means, again we need to use this equation. So, force along y direction is equal to m a. So, we have tension, uh, uh, y component of tension which is that and then we have w. So, this object is not moving up or down or accelerating up or down. So, that is 0. So, T is equal to W over cosine theta or M G over cosine theta. So, what I what I am going to do here is we do not have tension. So, I will just eliminate tension and then find V first, V first by eliminating T and then later I will find T again okay, once I have V. So, let us eliminate T by replacing T by this expression. So, T is m g over cosine theta sin theta is equal to m v squared over r. Okay. You can cancel m and m g sin over cosine is tan theta v squared over r. So, multiply both sides by r. So, then v is square root of r g tan theta. Okay. R radius of the circle is 0.2, g is 9.8 and theta is 5 degrees. So, that gives us, I do not have answer here. Can you guys do the calculation and see what you get?
radius is 0 0.2. So let's see, someone has answer maybe. So 0 0.41. Point four one four, four one four. Okay. Point four one. Uh, let's just write point four one meters per second. Okay. Now we can find uh, tension. So either you use Oh, so this is the answer for C. Okay, so part C, we just found C. So then find the tension. So tension, actually, you didn't even have to find velocity for tension. So you can just use this one, but that's fine. We already got velocity. So that gives us the answer for C. Now to find tension, you either use this equation or this equation. But seems like this would be easier. So T would be M mass 0 0.05. Uh, this is in gram, so you need to convert that to kilogram. So times 10 to negative 3 kilogram. This is very important. Okay? So when you are uh, expressing tension in Newton, the mass should be in kilogram. G is 9.8. And then cosine five degrees. Okay, that gives you the tension. And then uh, let's look at B. Centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. Okay, so we found v, which is zero point four one, and then the radius of the circle, zero point two meters. Okay, so let's find out the answer for this one. Tension. So it's a small number, 0 0.00049. Okay, or you can write this as 4.9 times 10 to 4 Newton. So that's the tension, and let's also find the centripetal acceleration. So let's see, uh, that's 0 0.84. So centripetal acceleration is acceleration, so the unit is meters per second squared. Okay. okay. <coughs> so we got up to number five. Uh, I think we are almost out of time. We'll uh, finish this uh, in the next class. Okay, so we'll do ne uh, number six in the next class. Uh, by the way, if you guys, I have already uh, graded your exam. You can check your uh, score on Blackboard. If you want to see your test, uh, please come and talk with me. Okay, during my office hour. If you want to see what questions you missed or where you missed the points, you can come and talk with me.